Hey everybody, it's Chris and Rick Talk Guitars. We're back. It's been a while. I came across an article somewhere, maybe social media, something like that, uh, kind of uh, uh, entitled, Apparently There Are No More Guitar Gods. And I thought that would be an interesting topic for Chris and I to discuss since he and I are both guitar players, as you guys know. Uh, God. Maybe uh, new, as you people know. And maybe some listeners uh, don't know that, but yeah, he and I have played guitar for most of our lives and classic rock dudes and yada, yada, yada. But um, yeah, that that headline kind of caught my eye and, and it's kind of a short synopsis of a, an interview that this guy did with Andy Moore, the CEO of Fender, talking about guitar gods and, and the paradigm shift um, as he saw it. What do you think, Chris? Just kind of big picture, like you and I kind of grew up in the era of guitar gods, really. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's how, when you say that immediately, what comes to mind guitar god or guitar hero is yep. you know jimmy page dragon pants with the double neck guitar you know down yep. to his knees that kind of thing and that's kind of what we grew up on and it doesn't really mean that to me anymore well how is it, how has it changed for you in terms of i don't know I, I mean there's so many when i think of a guitar god uh -huh. it's like there's so many it, it changes so much and it's like to me a guitar god as someone who like can turn my head or like just it's more about what they do in the context of a song that yeah. you know it's like i mean i'm trying to think of an example it's it's weird I, i'm just thinking about this now i have other thoughts but i mean an example today at rehearsal we were we have to learn a mc5 song for the show that we're doing and um they picked uh the american roots and i'm listening to it and i'm like oh and there was a solo, and Wayne Kramer just peels off this like very, very Chuck Berry, like influenced lick with a bit of his own flair to it. And that, yeah. I mean, that listening to that, it was so cool it was, for the part. I'm like, there's a guitar god. I mean, yeah. that's what it, someone who like in the context of a song just comes up with something brilliant and it catches your ear, and you can hear what they were were trying to do with it, and it just works. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, a guitar god was somebody who like, you know, like Michael Schenker, Eddie Van Halen, something like that, where it was yeah. like, obviously that they were doing something that was difficult, but that, I mean, that's no longer the case for me. You know, it, it, it can exist a level of, you know, godliness can exist from, you know, at all different kind of levels. To well, me. it's so cool that you said that because that's exactly what I was thinking in terms of my, perception of guitar gods or great guitar players is is my my perception evolved exactly when i was a young kid i was attracted to the shiny object which were shredders yeah like michael shanker eddie van halen even hendrix page guys that could you know rip off these killer you know shredder guitar solos and they're great i still love them very much but as i got older i really was drawn more towards uh, people, musicians in general, basically serving the song, right? Like, or doing something like you were saying, you know, coming up with some interesting or unique guitar part for a song or, or guitar part. And then also my, my guitar appreciation uh, expanded, right? Because I mean, I was kind of just relegated to these rock people that I focused on. But then as I became exposed to like, Chet Atkins or Jerry Reed or any number of players out there, Bonnie Raitt, Leona Boyd, my appreciation expanded for what is a great guitar player or what is a guitar god. So, yeah, it's cool that you said that. Right. I think there's, now that we talk about this too, I think there is a, a difference between guitar god and guitar hero. And that's, guitar hero is probably more what I, I'm talking about. A yeah. guitar god to me if I think about it, it'd be somebody like just, you know, like Clarence White or something that's just like beyond this level of like, you know, uh -huh. just unbelievable. And, you know, and that's cool. And I probably have, and I could probably list some people who I think are guitar, but a guitar hero is just somebody that turns my ear and it's like, they, they like saved or they made this song, you know? So it's just like somebody that, just draws you in you know it doesn't even have to be solos either it could be you know rhythm parts or anything like that so when we talk guitar gods i kind of yeah i kind of think that's a different that's something that does really kind of 
bring in like technical ability a little bit in my mind. I mean, I don't even know if it's important to make that distinction, but when we're talking about this, it, it kind of struck me as there being a difference between gar, guitar God and guitar hero. How about you? Yeah, well, so see, I like the way you're kind of delineating this, but I don't know if I, because I think what I attribute, what my perception of a great guitar player when I was younger was all technical proficiency and all this other crap or how fast a person could play. But I think whether you're guitar hero or guitar god or whatever, we're going to label these different musicians as for me, it's basically just more their imagination and how they approach the instrument that I really grew to appreciate. Right. And it's like, and it's not to say that the ones we mentioned page, you know, the other ones, they're, they, they're imagined it too in their own way, but it seems oh, yeah. like to me, I guess what I was thinking too, in terms of a guitar God is it's more of a package, right? It's like, like you were saying, like when you vi visualize Jimmy page, he's got that, that cool, you know, serpent suit on and he's got the double neck and he's got the long hair so it's this package that you're seeing as this guitar god presented as this whole thing right but like you and i were talking about oh god now his name escapes me and it pisses me off but that session guy for for bread that i sent you that video of um god i forget his name but that guy is one of the best guitar players i've ever heard in my life and he does this subtle tasty awesome shit but nobody knows what he looks like you know because he's a studio guy so I think it's really fascinating to think about what is a guitar god, what is a guitar hero, or or, or how do you categorize these different musicians uh, based on what they bring to the table, and then based on the package that they have to project as a a, a commodity or or an image, you know? Yep, it's it was purely visual. The whole like '60s '70s guitar god thing was definitely a you know a visual thing. Yeah, uh, one of the things that I think kind of makes things a little muddled is the way that in especially in this country how everything gets kind of like funneled into the sports thing like uh -huh. the sports I and mean, that's where it becomes more about like ability and you know, virtuosity yeah. i've always pushed for separation of sports and rock that's kind of a problem with all of those most underrated guitar things yeah. we talked about that before it's like okay yeah. if you're going to do most underrated what do you what is your criteria i mean who having a most underrated guitar test for somebody who doesn't play the guitar right away it's kind of invalid because they're just going to go for the thing that shines the most i don't know the longer you play guitar the more you realize how things that you wouldn't have thought you would be impressed by before you're very impressed by after exactly. years of not being able to do what they're doing i mean sure we could all like woodshed and practice and get play really really fast and blow people's minds but it's like there's so much more to guitar playing that really, if you're having an underrated guitar, you know, contest, it's that someone's going to have to know enough about the guitar to know why this person is amazing. You know, totally. The problem that I have with these things, it's like there's there's no ratings. There's no fair rating system. No. And plus, the other thing, it's it's fucking art, too. I mean, it's, you don't do this with painters. You know exactly. what I mean? Everybody brings a bit of themselves in there. And you know what? And it, and it changes day to day. I mean, if if I kept a diary, who's my favorite guitar player today? I would have 30 different guitar players by the end of the month. It's just, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. But I guess what is interesting about this question that you brought up is guitar gods. Yeah. What do, you know, what do the young guitar players think of that now? I mean, do they yeah. still have guitar gods? Is it the same that they had? As you know, as we had these visual like guitar slinger kind of like iconic guitar players, or are they looking for something different? And also now that everybody in the world practically plays guitar, it's like, is you know, is that still is there still guitar gods? I would imagine there is, even though I mean like you know TikTok and Twitter and or whatever all these. I mean, there's a million brilliant guitar players that are just like in their twenties. Yeah. They're like just kicking, kicking ass on guitar in a in a technical kind of way. I don't know. It's like, what do you think that do you? Uh, what do you think the kids of today think of guitar? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I had so much to say about what you just said. First of all, I, I agree completely. I think the sports thing is really an unfortunate aspect of our nature in terms of what, how we how we evaluate things and music especially it's ridiculous because it is an art and it's and 
And that's what I've learned as I've gotten older too. It's like, you know, and I was, when I was young, I, I fell into that whole thing. It's like, Oh, those guys suck. You know, these guys are shred, you know? And it's like, no, <laughs> there's so much room for all of these different guitar players and all that they bring that, you know, making these comparisons is, is pointless and frivolous. All it does really is fill space in a magazine or, you know, or fill space in an interview or, or a, it, but it, in terms of real musicians and how we evaluate who we like and who, who speak to us, it, it has nothing to do with this, these sports analogies, you know, where who's better than who. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So I, I, I think, a note count. I want a note count. This guy, <laughs> 50 more notes. How many notes did they squeeze into that second? Uh, and, but like you said, I, I, there is a couple people that come to my mind in terms of that I, that I, that even an old dude like me, they're on my radar. One is Aranthi, that woman that plays with all kinds of different artists and she's a shredder. She plays, you know, great. She, she's kind of in that vein. She's got a look. She's a great guitar player. Another one is John five. Um, that guy is actually, he's really a student of the guitar and he, he can play finger pick stuff. He can play shred stuff. So I think those two guitar players in terms of, I think younger generations being them being maybe guitar gods in, in to younger generations maybe that's the case i still don't know about the dynamic and and if it's totally analogous to ours in terms of how these certain guitar players were just elevated to you know kind of god status i mean literally clapton somebody painted on a wall clapton is god you know i mean and hendrix is kind of at that level too this mythological level of um stardom or or you know, adulation that people have for him. But I always think about that too. But uh, in that article, it was interesting because uh, I'm paraphrasing, but one of the things that was said is, you know, some of the paradigm shifts were punk rock, which totally makes sense, right? Which punk rock was kind of the answer to the the decadent kind of silly 70s corporate rock shit that was going on. And then also in the 60s and 70s, the fans of music or bands, they they, they tended to to idolize bands more, maybe more so than than modern times. What do you think about those two kind of seminal uh, issues relating to maybe the death of the guitar god or, or, or the yeah. paradigm shift, I guess? Well, I would argue about the punk rock thing. I think there's plenty of punk rock guitar heroes. Johnny Thunders is one that comes That's to true. mind right away. but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the guitar was, and the guitar slinger, kind of like, I think yeah. there was plenty of people who idolized, you know, punk rock guitar players. I mean, that's cool because it was still very visual. There's posters, you know, of punk rock guitar players. So I think more than anything during that time, it was probably like new wave music and like, you know, synthesizers uh, and keyboards that maybe kind of dealt a little bit of blow to the guitar hero. But I don't know. I mean, I just think... You know, the thing that I know is a lot of times you go to a show and it's a good show and you walk out. And how many times have you heard somebody saying blah, blah, blah is a god because they play really well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, they move people. They like, you yeah. know, they just did something. It worked. I mean, I don't have posters of guitar players in my room anymore or anything like that. So it's, it's just a different. It's an interesting topic, but it's like I keep getting turned around trying to think of how to address what it means. I mean, a, a guitar hero or a guitar god to me is just like somebody who moves me. Yeah. Or just catches my ear. And Yeah, and I agree. But I, I really thought it was cool that you and I basically had the same perception of, or, or evolution, I should say, in terms of our perception of guitar players and what, what constituted being a good guitar player to us at different points of our lives. And I think that's probably the case with most people you know, I think the punk thing is interesting. I think you're right. I think there were guitar gods, per se, but they were, I think, but, but it's interesting because their motivation was different. I think their right. they weren't the motivation like, was like burn this shit down or, or, you know, the punk motivation was a little different than kind of the complacent decadent 70s, 60s shit that was going on. But Thank yeah. You, and solos definitely, man. And so I think, I think you're right. I think the new wave thing did, it was kind of a lull in the guitar thing that maybe kind of reset things a little bit because obviously guitars came back and there were plenty of bands, new wave bands that had guitars, but since definitely took a front front stage during that time period. But that's a good point. I think new wave probably more so than punk it kind of put a lull into the whole guitar thing. 
And then like 80s, late 80s college radio, which, you know, turned into alternative or whatever you want to call it. There was a while where, you know, solos were frowned upon. I was in a band too. It was like, you know, I, I didn't want to play a solo, you know, I'm like, oh no, if you play a solo, just play something really quick. Yeah. So, you know, solos became kind of passe, but we're still, I mean, we're still, we're not talking about guitars. I guess, I guess the guitar God does involve like tasty solos or something. It must, because that's where I keep going to. But I think, you know, would somebody like Keith Richards be a guitar god? He is a guitar god. Yeah. Too. But um, he's, you know, primarily, you know, rhythm based. And, you know, he does some, you know, Chuck Berry type licks, but he's just brilliant. I mean, yeah. what he does with the guitar, the songs he's that he's created on the guitar. I mean, fuck yeah, he's a guitar hero. I mean, <laughs> so, yeah, and he doesn't do like shreddy stuff. I mean, I don't know. It's well, maybe part of it too is the advent of alt or alt bands that started to have like 20 people in the band on stage, right? How do you pick out oh, yeah. like yeah. one person? That you, I mean, that might be, you know, another part of like modern bands. I mean, I guess they're not, well, they became more common, you know, having like more than four people or three people in a band became a thing, right? Like where you've got six or seven people on stage, all trading instruments. So that's another kind of paradigm shift that, well, not paradigm shift, but something that kind of started to happen, I think. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I, I think it's interesting because for me, I don't, I, I think it is totally has changed and it's not, it doesn't seem the same as it was when at the height of, of this guitar God shit that was going on for decades with, you know, the, the usual names that we throw around. Right. Right. Well, in the context of this article that you found, it was basically this guy mentioning something, guitar, God is dead, but he's talking to somebody at Fender who is going right. nuts because we're selling more guitars than ever. And I believe that. I mean, I believe, yeah. but yeah. I think the guitar is something that it, in, you know, back in the heyday of the guitar God, it was more of a novel thing. It's like, not everybody did it. It was something that was like just mysterious it's like, man, you know, I'd like to one day learn how to play guitar, but I don't know. And now everybody's just like, it's what you do when you're in fifth grade. You know, yeah. it's like you get a guitar for, you know, someone gets you a guitar and you learn how to play it. And usually these little fuckers are really good, too, which. Oh, yeah. I mean, that has something to do with it. But again, I mean, for me and hopefully a lot of people, it's like it means it's not as easy to define. Like, you know, I mean, otherwise there would be one guitar god. I mean, it's godliness is tastiness i mean it's just like for me anyway it's i hear it day whenever i'm listening to music i hear it all the time and i hear it you know i don't think there is any one guitar player who's the best or i don't think any yeah. one guitar player can play circles around anyway there are guitar players i think that play in similar styles where someone will mention one and i'll go oh that's great but i think this guy does that what that guy's doing better you know what i mean i, uh -huh. I just feel like this guy's take on a little bit better yeah. There's that, but um, yeah, I don't know. I think anybody has the ability, if they they have it going on and they're really in touch with their instrument, to be a guitar god. Yeah, and I think you hit on another good thing too: the proliferation of guitars and how guitar is pretty much an accessible instrument. And yeah, I mean, you look at YouTube and you'll see these young young kids on there just playing some insane stuff, and it's like. So I think technology and the proliferation of guitars has probably helped kind of um, democratize guitar to a point where it's like, oh, yeah, this little this 12 year old can play all this crazy stuff on guitar. So it's like they see, you know, professional musicians and they're like, oh, I can do that. Or, you know, I just so so maybe just in their mind, it's like they've the their own proficiency has kind of, um, you know, changed their percep skewed their perception on you know, what professionals, because like you were saying to me, when I was growing up, it was more of a black box or mystified. I was mystified by like how certain guitar players did things or, or how they played. So it seemed like there was a lot more separation between me and that guitar player. It's like, how are they doing that? Or, you know what I mean? And now, and that's another thing like technology, like now there are videos and I can go, Oh, I see how that person's doing it. Or they'll just do a rig rundown and, or they'll show you on video. This is how I do this part. It's like, Oh, okay. And I still can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing of it is you talk about all those kids, those like little virtuosos out there, you know, on posting videos, yeah. what are they playing? 
they're playing like ACDC and Led Zeppelin. That's true. Yeah. They're playing stuff from the guitar. So obviously they have guitar heroes. I mean, yeah. they still draw from the same sources. I mean, it's just like, it's just good rock and roll. So, yeah. I mean, and that's, I mean, kind of like for, you know, when you started out, when we started out and probably everybody from like the fifties on, I mean, it was, what did you play first? You learned the blues, right? You learned, yeah. you know, the, basic thing and, and you took it from there and you went to you know rock or whatever you wanted but it's something so for them i'm guessing that what do you learn you learn like the classic rock you know so yeah. that's kind of like the blues for them you know a lot of people it's just like the foundation yeah, yeah. If, if you, i i wish i had like a 22 year old here to ask that was into guitar that played guitar and ask them like who's you know who's a guitar hero of yours who do you really look up to and Chances are it would be somebody from the 70s or, you know, 60s or 70s. But yeah. at the same time, I mean, I don't really follow. I don't have my finger on the pulse of, I mean, I'll check stuff out, you know, because like, I'm always curious. But, yeah, I just. Well, I say we pose that question. Like, we'll pose it online. And if there are young listeners that of the show. Yeah, because I'd love to know their perception of who they love on guitar and what their perception is of guitar players these days in terms of if it if it is analogous to kind of how we were if, uh, impacted by guitar players uh, in our youth, you know, right? Yeah, it's curious. Cool. Well, yeah, that was great. I yeah, we'll pose that question on on our site and and on our social media. But that was a great discussion, and I'm sure we'll have more to say about this. But yeah, thanks for listening as always. And check us out on the usual places, Spotify, Apple Music, and Apple Podcasts, and, and our site, Chris and Rick Talk Guitars.com. All right. Until okay. next time. Bye. Bye.